punch all the way to the end and then pull then continue punching so this can be pretty fast if you're used to this you can actually make very many rags per day for making this rug this fluffy rug so you are going to need the sack material so the rug looks like this on the underside so this is a sack material i will show you how to bind this and watch the last part of this video alternatively if your sack rug if your sack is very loose i will show you how to bind this before you start making your rug you're going to need your sack and then your thread choose the colors that you want you're going to need a marker pen like this one or just a normal pen this is for making the pattern that you want on your sack. You're going to need scissors for cutting your sack, also your thread or yarn. And then you're going to need a punch needle. So I have already inserted this, but I will show you here. This is how I inserted this yarn. Take your punch needle, and then you need to insert this yarn, which was this one. Or if you have a needle, you can actually insert it using this. So what I'm going to do is just then insert it through this hole. So here is your loose end. So as you can see, now what you need to do is make sure that this thread goes through the eye of the needle, this one. So don't insert it from the top side. You need to insert it from the underside. You see where it came through? So like that. So you need to insert it through here and not through this top side. Insert this here. So so here it is, so you pull this through here. There it is. So first thing you need to do is to make this pattern that you want. First of all, the shape you want of your rug. So I cut mine a circle. If you want a rectangle or triangle, whichever shape you want, you need to cut that. So I will need to cut this and then draw this shape. So you do want to know how to cut a nice circle shape like this one. This is how you do it. So take your sack. So if you are a good artist, chances are that you can already draw your circle. Something like this. You start with a sketch. And then you fill in the shape. Like that. So this is your center. So it looks pretty good. But if you do not know how to draw this freehand, then let me show you how to draw that without needing complicated tools. So remember you have your thread. So you basically make hold this like that, tie here, make sure that it is tight so that the pen does not come loose, and then depending on the size of your circle you want, so if you want a big one, so this is the radius from this end to here, this is the radius, so if it were in this case, the radius is this one here, so what we are going to do is, I don't want a very long mat, so I'm going to, so you dot your center like that, if your pen comes loose, insert. So chances are you're going to end up with lots of this matter. I need to erase that. Alternatively, I can just cover my finger so that I don't get that marker. So I just insert that. Like that. And then I'm going to hold my finger on the dot on the thread. Place it on top. And then I'm going to freehand like this. So you see that's coming out nicely. so there it is now i can cut around this or before i cut i can even draw my heart shape yeah something close to that it doesn't need to be perfect because in the end all these threads are going to cover your shape so here i have it i'm going to fill in this the inside part with this light purple or line up it looks more like lilac color so this is what i'm going to fill in here and then this dark purple is what i am going to fill outside if you want you can even add another small circle if you want to add white color or something else but for now i will leave it as it is i will fill all this with this lilac so my rug is going to look like this so i can take this off now always make sure that you cover your marker pen when you're done because they dry up you can also use chalk instead of this marker pen or just a usual pen so i will take my scissors now 
and cut my shape. So I won't cut these, I will cut only the circle. So I have this, now I can start making my rug. Let me show you how that works. So I need my punch needle. So this is how I inserted the thread to make sure that it comes out like this. Now we start punching. So with my punch needle, so I start with this. I will insert, make sure you always have this loose thread. So I will insert this here. So for those of you who have a loose threads on your sack material, let me show you quickly how you bind this so that they don't come loose. So you will need first of all to fold this and then you can use a normal thread and needle, like this one. So let me show you with this. I have my sewing thread. So I have my sewing needle and thread, sewing thread. So if I want to bind this, so for now you can choose which side you want to be the top side. So the top side of your rag, fluffy rag looks like this. The underside of your shaggy rag will look like this. So for now, you can choose which one you want to be there. Underside, this one or this one. So in the end, don't worry about these marks. They will be concealed by all this thread like this. So for now, let's assume this is my underside, this side, so that I can follow my pattern. So what I will need to do is maybe fold this on my underside like that. If the threads are too loose, Watch this video to see how actually you can do this if you have very loose threads. But if they are not so loose, you can just fold once and then insert your needle like that. So this is how it looks like. And then like that. So you pull that. So I am doing the back stitch. There are so many other stitches that you can use. So I am doing the back stitch. So I will insert back one hole like that. So this is how it looks like. And then I'm going to pass this. And then insert like that. So see how that is binding. So I insert and then there. So this is how you actually do this even when you have finished your back. So continue folding and then hemming. I am using a back stitch, but you can watch this video that is playing right here on this corner to see how you can do other stitches. So this is how it's going to look like, it's going to be neat and no loose threads are going to come off. So for now, I will finish with this. And now I want to start making my fluffy rack. So let's start. So I have this loose thread coming out of my punch needle. So I am going, let's start here. So I'm going to punch here like this. So punch all the way, all the way up to where your punch needle decays. So mine starts decaying where this gold or copper coated part starts. So I'm going to insert this punch like that all the way to the end. And then because I'm just starting, this is how it looks like. So there. So I'm going to pull this thread all the way out like that. For now I'm going to hold it and then I will show you how to tie it. So I'm going to pull my punch needle out but not all the way. I want to make sure that I have some length here and this is what is going to come out on this other side to make now these loose threads. So making sure that this sharp end looks away from you, you punch another hole. So I will punch like that all the way. So you see, if you punch all the way and you had a nice length, this already flattens. So here it is on this side. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull this a bit. So I'm going to pull this and then make sure that I make a knot here. So insert this here like that and then through here. There you go. If you want, you can repeat, but it is not going to come loose. So there I have it. And then I'm going to pull this. Not all the way. I'm going to leave now this fluffy part. So this is what makes all these fluffy fluffy threads so i'm going to hold this for now if you like you can just hold this with your hand like that and then you have this 
So if for whatever reason your thread is too long, you can always pull it through this like that until you have your desired length. So this is my desired length. So I'm going to punch another hole here. This sharp end looks away from me. So I'm going to punch all the way until where my needle begins. So you can see this side looks like this and this side looks like this. I already have my loose thread. So this loose end, let me cut it so that it does not confuse us. So I already have one loop, which is now this side. And then this is the underside, which looks like this. So I am going to hold this. If you like, you can just pull your punch needle through like this. Alternatively, you can just hold this end and pull what I have so far. And then I hold this. Make sure that I have my desired length punch all the way to the end and then pull then continue punching so this can be pretty fast if you're used to this you can actually make very many rags per day so you just punch and pull punch and pull so if this is too long remember I told you you can always adjust using pulling this so this is my yarn so if you want to adjust if it is too short, you can pull from here, like this. I hope you can see, like that. So I will continue punching. So as you can see, my underside is coming along very nicely. Now it looks like this. And my other side looks like this. So as you can see, I have made a few more punches in my progress of making my shaggy rack. So if you do not want to lose the trace of your shape, so my shape was this one. So you can just punch around this. Holding this with my fingers like this. So these two hold like this and stretch it. And these two hold like this so that you can punch like that. Otherwise, if you had one of those hold this material, it's going to be easier for you and then you can just punch, punch. So for me, I will just use my fingers to stretch my sack. And then this is long, so I need to pull it to the length that I want. Always making sure that this sharp end faces away from you. So you continue with this. Change the color of your thread whenever you want. I had a rag like this, which I need to fill with this. So here it is. So I have not completed this outer side, but I want to start with this. So I'll go to my underside. My, the underside of my fluffy rag looks like this. So I will make sure that this end is always facing away from me. So I will punch. And then, because I'm starting with this new one, I am going to pull this all the way so that I can make a knot later. And then I'm going to pull. Make sure you have enough length and then you're going to punch again, making sure this head faces away from you. So you punch all the way to where your need punch needle thickens. So here it is. So for now I am going to hold this with my hand. I'm going to pull this so that I can make a knot with this loose end. So like that. If you like you can repeat. Now I can cut this loose end. Perfect. So I will pull this only up to where this disappears. Like that. So here I have it. So for now I will hold this like this. And then see if I pull this needle, this thread is going to get in here like that. So this is my yarn. So again, make sure you have enough thread like that. Punch. So I use my fingers to hold and stretch this because I cannot just punch like that. So I will punch this all the way to the end. Pull out. Then punch again. 
so basically this is all you do so that was my punch needle and my yarn and that is how you make this rug this fluffy rug and it is quite cozy and quite soft so that's how you make that thank you for watching please watch Maggie's DIY rug. it's the playlist I have put in this channel it has all sorts of shaggy rugs and how to make them like this one so this is when you mix colors and then you're making this shaggy rug on a fabric like this one or cloth and then you can have you will see also the video on how to make such a fluffy rug while also using fabric and then there's how to make this fluffy one this fluffy rug it looks like the one I had I made on sack except that I made this using a cloth or fabric so I will show you how to make this also also there is a video on how to make a shaggy rug using the mat mesh different types of mat meshes and also how to use a crochet like if you do not have the fabric and you do not have the sack material and you do not have the mat mesh then you can use just your thread alone and in that case some of the tools you might need so some of the tools you might need when you want to make your DIY rug could be the normal crochet especially if you're not using any of the mat mesh or sack or fabric you will need to use only this crochet or you can use this latch yeah sorry I got colored from my pen so you can use this latch crochet this is when you have a mat mesh like this one and then you might need sewing needles sewing needle and sewing thread when you're using fabric or cloth or t-shirt to make your shaggy rug so watch this playlist if you want to see how you can make your fluffy rug your rug your mat your diy rug whatever you call it so watch this playlist to see how you can make whatever you want thank you for watching please subscribe and comment if you're facing any challenges please leave a comment if you ask if your rug came out nicely please show us and leave a comment in the comment section we can actually put some of those comments on facebook on my facebook page and facebook group or instagram or twitter called maggie's diy world so if you cannot attach an image on youtube on the comment section just join facebook my facebook group maggie's diy world also facebook page twitter instagram they go by the same name maggie's diy world so you can post there your comments or your images and encourage each other use this stitch this is a back stitch or you can use this binding stitch so if you want to know more about stitches please check this video it shows you how to make all different stitches so if your threads are very loose and you need to trim them you do that first so allow me to trim this So I'll trim that and then I will show you how I do my stitches. So that is much better. All you need to do is to fold this once and then you fold it again. If you want, you can even fold it thrice so that the risk of those threads coming loose are nil. Now let's do the back stitch. So you take your needle and your thread like this. So this is how you do the back stitch you insert your needle like that and then you pull if you want you can tie this or leave it as it is and then you go back to that hole you insert your needle and then you skip this one and so again you go back one hole So I hope you can see how that stitch is coming. So I just insert, let me show you from behind. So you continue with that until all this is sealed all the way around. So I will show you the other stitch. So we had this one. This one looks nice too. I'm using contrasting colors so that you can see what is happening. Assuming that this end had loose threads. So you fold twice or thrice. And then you take your needle. 
like this let me cut my thread you insert your needle here and you pull sorry so insert like that then you pull i will want to tie this maybe just once is okay and then i will insert here again let me cut this loose one so i will insert this and then instead of pulling it all the way make sure that this loose thread i flip it like that you see that so i will insert here and before i pull it all the way out i will make sure that i have this thread i loop it there like that so again if you want to see how you can make this stitch please check this video it shows you how to do all these stitches so you continue like this so at the end of the day you have bound all your loose threads and nothing is going to come